Speaking of Princeton, I'm saying the following funny incident. I was once teaching a course on probability, and uh, I told the class something which surprised them very much, which many of you already know, namely <coughs> that if a, uh, in a room, if there are 24 people in a room, the chances are more than 50% that at least two of them have the same birthday. Then I said to the class, now there are only 19 students present, so it's very unlikely that two of you here had the same birthday. One boy said, I'll bet you a quarter that two of us here had the same birthday. I thought for a while, I said, oh, well, of course, because you know somebody else's birthday other than your own. He said, no, I can assure you, I do not know anybody's birthday other than my own. Nevertheless, I will bet you that at least two of us here had the same birthday. So I thought I'd teach him the error of his ways. And so I said, all right, I went to the class, what's your birthday? What's your birthday? What's your birthday? I suddenly stopped and realized I'd suddenly forgotten. I suddenly realized I had forgotten that two of the kids in the class were identical twins. Which shows the futility of pure theory when not backed by empirical observation. I was telling you now a story about a statistician. A certain statistician once told his friend that he didn't like taking airplanes. When I asked why not, he said, because I computed the probability there'd be a bomb on a plane. Although the chances are low, the probability is too high for my comfort. A week later, the friend meets the statistician on a plane. So how can you change your theory? He said, I didn't change my theory. It's just that I subsequently computed the probability there simultaneously be two bombs on the plane. That is low enough for my own comfort. So now I simply carry my own bomb. Now let me tell you about one of my, one of my favorite topics, self-reference, which played such an important role in the proof of Gödel's famous incompleteness theorem, which Gödel so ingeniously constructed a sentence asserting its own non-provability in the given mathematical system. And uh, such a sentence must be true, but not provable in the system. Of course, the classical example of self-reference is a, a version of the so-called liar paradox, the sentence which is, this sentence is false. If the sentence is true, what it says is the case, which means that it's false, and you have a contradiction. On the other hand, if the sentence is false, then it's true what the sentence says is false. So again, you have a contradiction. That's the paradox. Let me tell you now how I was once brilliantly outwitted by a kid aged uh, nine and a half. It happened this way. I was giving a lecture at a university. And to give the audience something to mull over, I came a half an hour early and I wrote on the blackboard, you have no reason to believe this sentence. Now, here's the obvious paradox. If uh, you have reason to believe the sentence, the sentence is true, which means you have no reason to believe it, which is a contradiction. On the other hand, if you have no reason to believe the sentence, the what it says is true, which is a good reason to believe it. Well, what happened was this. I came down to the class, I came down to the hall half an hour later, I walked down the aisle, and there I saw a very bright looking kid on the first row, aged between nine and ten. I couldn't resist pointing to the sentence and saying, tell me, do you believe the sentence? He said, yes. I asked him, what is your reason? He said, I don't have any. I asked him, then why do you believe it? He said, intuition. He escaped the paradox perfectly. I once thought of the following combination of a paradox and an insult. Consider the following sentence. Only an idiot would believe this sentence. Now imagine two individuals, A and B, looking at that sentence written on a blackboard. A says to B, do you believe that sentence? B said, of course not. Only an idiot would believe that sentence. Now B is not being logically inconsistent, 
but he is being what I call psychologically peculiar. Because by saying only an idiot would believe that sentence, he's asserting the sentence, he's actually agreeing with the sentence, and so he clearly does believe the sentence. Yet he claims he didn't believe the sentence. So here he is, the curious situation of believing something and also believing that he doesn't believe it. That is not a logical inconsistency, but it certainly qualifies for what I would term a psychological peculiarity. I'll tell you the story of uh, an ancient Greek named Epimenides who heard of a certain great sage in the East who was supposed to be the epitome of wisdom, one of the wisest beings on earth. Well, of course, he was anxious to meet him. It took several years for him to find him. When he found the great sage, he asked, tell me, what is the best question that can be asked? And what is the best answer that can be given? And the sage replied, the best question that can be asked is the question you have asked. And the best answer that can be given is the answer I am giving. Well now, Martin, I'll be concluding this video in about four minutes or so. I do hope you enjoy it, or at least parts of it. I certainly had enormous enjoyment making it. Well, for the conclusion, sort of a coda, I will show you some photographs I took of the beautiful Catskill Mountains in which my wife and I reside. 